Hey, Becca. Hey, Kim. So in this video, we're gonna continue talking about how this arbitrary racial hierarchy was established in America, specifically about the beginning of the Atlantic slave trade and how our society became so stratified by race so early on. Okay, interesting. The Portuguese had started to buy slaves and bring them to Europe as early as 1526, but it wasn't until the 1600s when slaves were transported across the Atlantic and sold into servitude in the new colonies. All right, so I'm gonna draw us a little Atlantic world here. So we, and please forgive my terrible uh, maps womanship. This was directly connected to this competition between European powers for a stronghold in the new world. So this began with the Spanish in 1492 with Christopher Columbus, but slowly also the English, the Dutch, the Portuguese, everyone is trying to establish their own colony uh, that they could hopefully gain a lot of new resources from and just establish glory really in this new world. And having slaves was a really big part of being able to do that. Yeah, I mean, if you think about, just imagine kind of living in, I don't know, England uh, and hearing about how well Spain is doing, uh, <laughs> getting all this gold uh, and silver from the New World. So uh, Spain is definitely improving its national standing in Europe, and the rest of Europe is thinking, hmm... Sounds to me like we need to get in on this game. And so to get in on the game, really what the European powers needed were laborers to work in these new plantations. As you may know, when the Europeans came over, they brought a ton of disease which decimated these Native American populations, which they had previously used to labor through the Encomienda system. So the African slaves actually had immunities to these diseases that the European powers really wanted to capitalize upon. Yeah, I think what's interesting here, and, and the reason that I drew this map is because I think it really helps us understand why it was that people who lived over here here had no immunity to European disease and why the people who lived over here did because if you think about sailing so here's Europe and people had been trading with Europe and West Africa and into the Middle East here for hundreds of years exactly so that gave them plenty of time to kind of build up immunities to each other so not only do people in Africa have the immunity to disease, they're also kind of a readily available labor source uh, because the practice of taking prisoners of war and selling them as slaves on the west coast of Africa was already established. So Europeans are looking for a labor force that isn't going to die of disease and there are people being sold as slaves on the west coast of Africa already. So at this point, there are kind of two competing labor forces between the Native Americans and the African slaves, colonists start realizing that the African slaves are actually a more economical labor force than the Native Americans since they had this immunity. Right, and they're also easier to keep as slaves uh, for Europeans because they're not on their home territory. You know, if someone showed up to your town and said, you're my slave now, you're gonna run away to the hills and they don't know anything about where your town is, so you're fine, right? It's, it's hard to enslave people on their home territory. But if you are buying someone who has been wrestled away from their home in Central Africa, brought to the coast, they're with people who don't even speak the same language as them, they're put on a ship to the New World, which is incredibly deadly. Say probably about 30% of enslaved Africans who were put in this, what is called the Middle Passage uh, died during the voyage. I think that's a really good point. And the reason that some colonists actually preferred Native American slaves is because of their knowledge of the land and agriculture. So the subordination of both the Native Americans and the African slaves led to lots of intermarriage between the two groups. And so in the colonies, there became a sense of racial mixing that we had never seen before. 
Interesting. And, and I can see how this might pose a problem if you're trying to figure out who should be a slave and who should not, because if you have someone who belongs to both groups, where do you categorize them? So a lot of the Spanish that were coming over had trouble distinguishing. So who was supposed to be a slave and who was a Native American as these two groups intermarry? So let's check out this painting to learn a little bit more about how the different groups were mixing at the time and how racial hierarchy really solidified at this time period. So you can definitely see that they've put things in, in multiple layers here. Here's Virgin Mary, or sort of representation of God or the higher power. And then here you see the Spanish whites. And below that, uh, Native Americans who might be the, the offspring of white Spanish settlers and uh, Native Americans. A Spanish and a Native American, that was called mestizos, right? Right. Um, or they might be the offspring of a Native American and an African, um, and those people refer to as Creoles. So there's a very complex system of racial hierarchy uh, in this Spanish society, basically um, organized around how much uh, white blood a person had, the more privileges and rights you had in their society. And you see the inverse in early America, right? In the early 1800s, when even one drop of African blood would make a person a slave. Right. And that's one thing that is always very confusing, even to the people of the time period, because it would be possible for someone who looked quite light-skinned to still be enslaved by virtue of their parentage. Exactly. And so this is the system by which society in the early early colonial time period was organized around a completely arbitrary factor like race. It was simply the easiest way to identify people and create a working class. And, you know, as we move forward, as the English begin to settle North America and shortly after their settlement import African slaves, the United States will become heir to a version of this system. 